Sanders has been very open of being pro-Venezuela, pro-Cuba, and pro-Soviet Union. So I decided to ask him about the one democracy in the Middle East, and look what happened then. Excuse me, Bernie, are you pro-Israel? Ma'am, you, 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 pro you, you, ma ma you need to step back. Can I ask, are you pro-Israel, Ma'am, you need to step back. It seems rather odd for him to dodge such a clear question. But I wasn't done with Bernie. I continued to his next location. And one of the things that fascinates me about Bernie Sanders is his love of the Soviet Union. Among many others, my parents themselves fled the cruelty of the Soviet Union back in the 80s. And Bernie Sanders ended up vacationing there in the 80s. If you haven't seen the video, take a look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a tradition. When people sit at the same table at the party and one side of the table staff starts singing a song. <laughs> yeah, the other side of the table. They, when they finish it, the other side has to sing their own song. Uh -oh. What are we going to yeah. sing? And as director no. said, added the two victims was um, today, the distinctive feature of our no. economy is competition. <laughs> <laughs> A cheerful Bernie, shirtless, sweaty, drinking and singing. And watch what happens when I asked him about it. Cruelty of the Soviet Union. Do you regret taking your honeymoon there? Actually, I didn't take a honeymoon there. You vacationed Who there. Who are you right? with, by the way? I'm with Rebel Media from Canada. So my parents are Polish. They actually fled the Soviet actually, Union. My father is Polish. See, we got something in common. And so, do you, what do you think that tells people when you vacation? It tells in people that what, first of all, it wasn't a vacation. What was it? From what we heard, it was your honeymoon. Well, you heard more. You should get your facts right. Okay, so what were you doing there? Establishing a sister city relationship with a city called Yaroslav. Very good program. Okay, and are you pro Israel? Thank you. His response didn't seem totally right to me, so I went ahead and did some quick research and found when he was speaking to the Washington Post, and he called it, quote, a very strange honeymoon. So naturally, I went back and asked him again. Excuse me, Senator Sanders. No, I'm honestly, I'm just trying to get my facts straight, like you said. So I see on the national, you spoke to the National Post, and you said it was, quote, a very strange honeymoon. So I'm confused if... Well, because I was married just previous to that, but we were married just previous, but this wasn't a honeymoon. The purpose of this trip, where I went with a whole delegation of folks from Burlington, Vermont, was to establish a sister city. Okay, okay. so when you said uh, okay. to the Washington Post, what was that really about? Okay, very... thank you. Okay, can I ask you another quick question, please? Care. Okay, thank you, take care. I'm standing on the White House grounds in Washington, D.C. Not a busy day here at the White House. The president is uh, has no open events to the public. Um, but it's a, a good chance for me to come down and familiarize myself with how the Washington press corps works. And I tell you, I went in and talked to a assistant deputy press secretary and I saw the big room where the press briefings happen and I saw some of the other reporters from other networks and they couldn't be friendlier and the accreditation process couldn't be easier. It was really just an email on Friday and here I am here on Monday. Um, the only wrinkle is that as a foreign national, I have to be escorted from the security gate to uh, the facility, which is fine by me. Those Canadians are known to be rascally. But my point, besides showing off that I'm here at the White House and having a little bit of fun, is to make uh, the opposite point. Back in Canada, the rebel dot media is blacklisted by Justin Trudeau and his censorious Prime Minister's office. We have been granted accreditation all over the world not just here in Washington. By the way, I'm the third reporter for The Rebel who's been accredited at the White House. Uh, we have been in the national legislature of Sweden, of Holland, 
of the United Kingdom. We've even been guests of the government in Iraqi Kurdistan. We've been in the halls of the UN headquarters in New York, of the European Union in Brussels and Strasbourg. There's almost no place in the, in the Knesset, in Israel, there's almost no place we haven't been accredited. And we were accredited again and again at UN conferences until Canada, uh, in the form of Christia Freeland, Catherine McKenna, and Justin Trudeau, blacklisted us and told the United Nations no longer to let us report in their conferences around the world. Then we send reporters anyways, they just won't let us in. But what's worse is that Canada, uh, in a combination of the government, the Prime Minister's office and the Parliamentary Press Gallery, has colluded to blacklist us from any events in Canada that are sponsored by the Parliamentary Press Gallery. So we've been blocked from any parliamentary briefings. We've been blocked even from the Canadian Embassy. Hi, Ms. Omar. David Menzies with Rebel Media. Can you comment on the uh, allegations of an affair with Tim Minette and that you were using um, campaigns from your uh, to fund his travel expenses? Ms. Omar, what is the penalty for uh, adultery in your native Somalia? Ms. Omar, why is Minnesota such a hotbed of uh, terrorism for recruiting in the U.S.? Ms. Omar? Ms. Omar, can you tell me uh, what the penalty is for adultery in Somalia? Hi, Ms. Presley. David Menzies with uh, Rebel Media. I'm just wondering... Hi. Oh, I'll just speak while you're getting ready, you know. Um, hi there. Yes, Ms. Presley, are you still a member of the squad after um, voting against the uh, BDS movement? Ms. Presley, can you comment on that? The squad is anyone doing the work of building a more equitable and just world. That's not just for people. Who is the who is the face of the Democratic Party today? Is it AOC or Nancy Pelosi? We got to get going. Sorry about that. I'm not impeding you, sir. I know you just... No way! Don't want to run no, over you. No, I. I'll, Sorry about that. Okay. Can you answer that, Miss Presley? Who is the uh, the face of the Democrat Party today? Is it AOC or Nancy Pelosi? Has Nancy Pelosi given you a gag order? The, the face of the Democratic Party are the people of this country. It's the everyday person. It's the American worker. It's the immigrant. It's the survivor. The face of the party are the people. But there's certainly been a rift uh, with... The party are the people. There's no rift. Okay, Thank you. Well, that wasn't the sort of in-depth interview I was hoping for, but these are busy congresswomen after all. Uh, Miss Presley, I don't know what she said to me. It sounded like baffle gab, but at least she did say something. Unlike Miss Omar, that was a matter of cat got your tongue or just a decision not to exercise her First Amendment rights, at least not on this day. And it's too bad because with all the issues surrounding her these days, Capitol Hill, at least if you're with the Omar camp, is resembling Peyton Place. What well, would talk about her having an affair and paying her lover's travel expenses with uh, campaign funds. Um, that's very interesting indeed. And of course, I had other questions. That's an excerpt from The Ezra Levant Show, which is a show I do every day. I do a monologue, interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at premium.rebelnews.com.